Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bibles and turn it to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right. Verse 1, Isaiah chapter 8. This is going to be the continuation of the commentary series. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll, and write it with a man's pen concerning Mayor Shalahazhbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Zibarichia, I guess. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived, and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Mayor Shalahazbaz. I'm guessing the prophetess is uh, Isaiah's wife. That's, I'm guessing. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spake unto me again, saying, Forasmuch as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in reason and Remaliah's son. Uh, reason was the uh, re, re, reason resin was the uh, king of Syria. Verse seven. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. Now, I think the Isaiah here is comparing the armies of Assyria to a flood. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, verse 8. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel. Now remember, Emmanuel means God with us. Now when the Assyrians, um, we're going to cover this, when the Assyrians uh, came into Judah, I mean, they took, they took Israel, northern Israel, completely. But they came into Judah also and took some of the fenced cities and towns. But when they got to Jerusalem, the Lord struck them down. He said, nope, you ain't taking Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to read about that. Verse 9. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye be broken in pieces, and give ear all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. You know, I went to when I went to secular college. Uh, I went to Bible college too, but I went to uh, public college for two years, and I always learned that when the teacher repeated something more than once, write it down, learn it. Memorize it, because it would probably be on the test. Well, here the Lord said, Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Yeah. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. Now, I think what he's saying is, Assyria is going to come into the land even under the neck. And what's attached to the neck? The head. And what was the head of Judah? Jerusalem, the capital. That's what I'm thinking here. 
For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Good advice. Don't worry about the New World Order. Don't worry about the Illuminati. Be concerned about the Lord, because we are in his hands. Verse 14. We're going to go back to verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary. Now, what's a sanctuary? It's a safe place. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense. We're going to go to Peter, 1 Peter. We're going to go to Romans, and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. And we're going to learn about a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. What's a snare? It's a trap, people. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Listen carefully. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. You know, they're talking about, you know, people that consult with ghosts with spirit beings, devils, demons. Seek unto them that, that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Harry Potter, anyone? Should not a people seek unto their God from the living to the dead? See, those in, those in the Lord are the living, and those that seek with familiar spirits and wizards, though their bodies might be alive, alive spiritually they're dead. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. All right, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 29. Uh, verse 30. Uh, this is when the Assyrians came to Jerusalem. And the remnant that has escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Now remember, Assyria came in and took many fenced cities in Judah. They took all of Israel and he took many of the cities in Judah. But here it is. Now he's at the gates of Jerusalem. Verse 31. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank 
against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend the city to save it for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore, and five thousand. That's 185,000 soldiers. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, let's go to Romans 9, verse... 29. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and had been like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed." Now, didn't that we read about that in um, Isaiah 8 and verse 14? And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses, houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right, let's go to first... Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world, word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and royal priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which he which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same has become the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll close this out. Who is this rock? 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that of that spiritual. Excuse me, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So there you go, people. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. To God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain 
from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.